So why am I talking about Proxmox? Well, because it's free and it's awesome. So I have been a VMware ESXi enthusiast for my whole life, and I still am. I still love VMware Hypervisor, allowing you to create virtual machines and many other things uh, for free. There is a free version of VMware ESXi and limited. Notice the difference between uh, what I said about Proxmox at the very beginning. Also a virtualization hypervisor, right? Also free, but awesome versus limited. That's, that's one of the, the reasons that I'm, I'm putting this whole series together. VMware is, is follow, has followed the model that, that many have followed for years and years and years. Give a pretty cool free offering, right? But if you want the ultimate features, you have to upgrade to this. But the challenge is some of those ultimate features are like, you can't survive well without them. Things like, you know, capping the, the, the amount of processors or memory to a certain amount. And, 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 you know, what they cap is different based on the version of VSXi that you're using. Or, or limiting features like high availability. You can't do that in the free version of VSXi. You have to pay for it, uh, which means if your server goes down, you lose all the VMs on that server, right? It's, it's, there's no instant failover. Uh, likewise, <laughs> backup, virtual machine backup. Nope, sorry, that API is closed. You can't back up your virtual machines on the free version. It's like, uh, like go, come on, like you're, it's, it's killing me. And so what Proxmox is, is, and matter of fact, here, I'll show it to you right now. An open source, so, so wide open, open source, uh, hypervisor, and it actually runs uh, Linux-based containers as well. You can see it up here. Create virtual machine, create container, which think of, think of containers uh, just like um, Docker. Uh, Doc, actually, Docker started on the same technology that, that Proxmox uses for these containers, but then evolved to be just one application, right? Docker equals application level virtualization, whereas the, the kind of container that you have in Proxmox is a full Linux environment. You can install multiple applications. It's just all on the same kernel. So, so you know, whether you like Docker, or whether you like um, uh, using containers like this, I mean, it's, it's totally, totally up to you. But regardless, Proxmox supports both of them. It supports high availability. It supports backup. You can see I'm running an Ubuntu machine right here. I'm running, well, it's shut down right now, but a, an eval version of Windows 2019 all sitting on this. I mean, you can map it to, to a, a variety of storage. And, I've, and by the way, I'm, I always uh, record my introduction at the end so I can accurately tell you everything that's in here. Mapping the storage to, to uh, uh, NFS file stores, right? Off box, which allows high availability to work. You can see then here that we have a, a full data center environment. This is centralized management where as I add servers of which I only have one right now, this Proxmox server right here, but I could just keep adding servers, start clustering them together, manage them all from a single pane of glass, which is again, another VMware paid feature. Now there, just, just to be fair, and then I'll, then I'll wind this introduction down. There are four primary uh, virtualization platforms out there uh, that people use for hypervisors or Linux containers or Docker uh, today. Uh, VMware, the biggest, Hyper-V, Microsoft Solutions, uh, Proxmox, which I'm talking about right now, open source, um, and and uh, XCPNG, another open source one that, that is uh, also fantastic. Um, I'll leave it to you to go Google and YouTube, you know, to, to find the different offerings that work for you or which one's better. I mean, they've all, they all have their own, their own features, but really in the end, the only thing that you pay for with Proxmox is support. The whole thing is wide open, but if you want support, that is, you're in a production environment, something's down, you need somebody to bail you out, that's where the cost comes in. And if you don't think that's essential, you've never been in a production environment where something's down and you would literally saw off your left leg if, if, if you could just have somebody come help you and give you guidance because the world is, I mean, that's, that's part of the game of being a system or network engineer, right? Is to be in those circumstances. So the best thing that you can do is make sure that you've, you can phone a friend uh, in those kind of circumstances. And that's, that's where Proxmox and the, and the organization that supports it makes their money, right? This series is gonna be essentially that, how to get started with Proxmox, which, which I think will launch you into a whole world that you may not have known before, right? This'll be fun. Let's keep it simple.